Hi everyone. Today we will discuss about the protein synthesis inhibitors. Whenever we use the antibacterial agents, these drugs are going to inhibit the bacterial growth. Otherwise, they are going to kill the bacteria. So they may be either bacteriostatic or bactericidal. But this bacteria is going to present within the host, that is the mammalian cells. So antibacterials can also produce some toxicity to the host. Therefore, we have to select the antibacterials such that they are going to produce a selective toxicity to the bacteria only without producing any toxic reaction in the host. So we have to observe any differences between the bacteria and host such that we can target the bacteria specifically by using the antibacterial agents. Proteins in the bacteria are somewhat different from the eukaryotes which can be used as a point of difference for the action of many of the antibiotics. So today in this video, we will see the different types of drugs acting on the protein synthesis within the bacteria. In the eukaryotes, the protein synthesis is going to be carried within the ribosome, but this ribosome is made up of two subunits, which are 60S subunit and 40S subunit. So totally it is a 80S complex, which is made up of 60S subunit and 40S subunit. But in the prokaryotes or in the bacteria, the ribosome is made up of two smaller subunits, 50S subunit and 30S subunit. So totally it is having a 70S complex which is made up of 50S plus 30S subunits. So this is one of the important point of difference between the eukaryotes and prokaryotes which can be used to target the bacteria specifically such that the drugs produce a less toxicity to the host cells. And if we see the steps in the protein synthesis, in the eukaryotes protein synthesis is observed with three steps. One is the initiation, elongation and termination. So now in the prokaryotes we can also observe the same steps like the initiation, elongation as well as termination. But if you see the process in the eukaryotes, the process is somewhat more complex involving the more number of initiation, elongation and termination factors compared with the prokaryotes. That's why many of the antibiotics can specifically acting on the protein synthesis within the bacteria and many of the drugs are going to affect the elongation process within the bacteria. So today in this video, we will see the different types of drug targets acting on the bacterial protein synthesis along with examples in that category. So first of all, let us see what are the important steps in the bacterial protein synthesis where the drugs are going to act. Already we have discussed that the bacterial ribosome is made up of two subunits. One is the 50S subunit and second is the 30S subunit. This 50S subunit is having the three important sites, the A site, P site and E site. A site is nothing but the attachment site where the tRNA is going to be added and P site is the peptide site where the peptide chain is going to be elongated and E site is the exit site from where the vacant tRNA is going out of the ribosome. In this way the tRNA is going to be attached to the 50S subunit of the bacterial ribosome and within the 30S subunit we can observe the mRNA which is having the number of codons, each codon specifying to a particular amino acid. Now here we will see the important steps where the drug targets are going to act. So one of the important steps in the initiation is the formation of 70S initiation complex. So within the bacteria, the 30S subunit is attached with the mRNA along with the initiator codon, the formyl methionine. This 30S subunit is then going to form a complex with the 50S subunit so that it is going to form a 70S initiation complex. After this step, it can undergo the elongation step, then it can start the protein synthesis. Attachment of tRNA. Now one of the important step in the protein synthesis is the attachment of tRNA to the 50S subunit. So here the tRNA is going to bring the each amino acid, but the tRNA is coming to amino acyl tRNA which is the active form of the tRNA. Then this tRNA is going to be attached to the A site where it is going to match with the codons present on the mRNA. So the first step in this protein synthesis is the attachment of the tRNA to the A site where it is going to bring the each amino acid. And uh, within this step, we can observe the codon anti codon pairing which recognizes the what are the amino acid according to the codon present in the mRNA. Next step is the transpeptidation. Now two amino acids are present on the P site and E site. These amino acids should be converted into a peptide chain and that process is the transpeptidation. 
so here the peptide chain which is present at the p side is going to be transported to the a side and it is attached with the amino acid already present on the a side this reaction is going to be mediated by one of the enzyme peptidyl transferase enzyme so this is one of the important step resulting in the elongation of the peptide chain next one is a translocation so here already the peptide chain is going to be formed by transpeptidation now this uh, peptide chain should be transported to the p side so that the new trna is going to be attached to the a side so this is the translocation so in the translocation the peptide chain is going to be transported from the a side to the p side so that the new trna can attach to the a side so these are the important uh, steps where the drugs can act now let us see the different types of drug targets acting at the different steps in the protein synthesis so one of the important step in this protein synthesis is the formation of the 70s initiation complex the 30s ribosome is ready for formation of a complex with the 50s subunit but here the linezolid is one of the drug which is going to inhibit the formation of 70s initiation complex linezolid is one of a drug belonging to the oxazolidinone which can inhibit the 70s initiation complex step 2 is the attachment of the trna now to this bacterial ribosome at the 50s subunit the trna is going to bring the new amino acid but here we have one of the category of drugs tetracyclines tetracyclines are going to bind to the 30s subunit that means they are going to be attached to the smaller subunit of the bacterial ribosome thereby they are going to prevent the attachment of the trna so whenever the new trna is going to be ready for attachment at the a site it will try to attach at the a site but because of the tetracyclines it cannot be attached as the tetracyclines are going to inhibit the attachment of the trna to the a site in this way tetracyclines are going to inhibit the one of the important step in the protein synthesis the the attachment of the trna to the a site but here the tetracyclines are not binding to the 50s subunit they are going to bind to the 30s subunit so now if we see the different types of drugs in this category one is the tetracycline itself then oxy tetracycline clo tetracycline they are having the suffix tetracycline similarly demiclocycline doxycycline minocycline limecycline these drugs are having the suffix cycline and particularly here doxycycline and minocycline are the two drugs which are having the more oral bioavailability and they can also cross the blood brain barrier so and the related category is the glycyl cycline so one of the drug in this category include the tigecycline this tigecycline is just acting like the tetracyclines step 3 is the codon and decodon pairing the mrna is present with the 30s subunit and this mrna will have the codons which will influence the incoming amino acids where each codon is going to specify a single amino acid now we have few other drugs like the amino glycosides these amino glycosides again can bind to the 30s subunit so they can inhibit this 30s subunit and they may prevent the assembly of the 50s subunit with the 30s subunit in this way amino glycosides can inhibit the assembly of the 50s subunit with the 30s subunit by one mechanism amino glycosides can also act by another mechanism they can promote the assembly of this 50s and 30s subunits but amino glycosides once they are going to form a complex with the 30s subunit they will inhibit the codon anti codon recognition so whenever a trna is going to bring the new amino acid this trna is going to be binding with the a site but here this anti codon is not recognized with the codon so the codon anti codon pairing is not promoted because the amino glycosides are going to inhibit this pairing because this amino acid is not recognized the amino acid cannot be retained within the a site so the protein synthesis can be inhibited in this way amino glycosides are going to produce the codon anti codon mis pairing so we have different types of amino glycosides like the imikacin which is having the suffix casin only one drug having this suffix similarly other drugs like the gentamicin nitylmicin cisomycin all these drugs are having the suffix mycin similarly other drugs like the kenamycin tobramycin streptomycin paramomycin all these are having the suffix mycin mycin and neomycin 
framacetine two of other drugs these two drugs are particularly useful for the topical purpose all these are the amino glycosides acting by inhibiting the codon anti codon recognition step 4 is the transpeptidation so chloramphenicol is one of the drug which is going to inhibit the transpeptidation this chloramphenicol can interact with the 50s subunit till now we have seen the drugs are going to interact with the 30s subunit like the amino glycosides as well as tetracyclines but the chloramphenicol is going to interact with the 50s subunit this chloramphenicol forms a complex with the 50s subunit thereby it inhibits the peptidyl transferase enzyme so that this peptide chain which is present on the p side cannot form a peptide linkage with the amino acid at the a site so in this way chloramphenicol inhibits the transpeptidation by inhibition of the peptidyl transferase enzyme and this chloramphenicol can also inhibit the mitochondrial ribose in the mammalian cells so it can produce some gray baby syndrome in the children because it produces cyanosis and reduce the oxygen supply in the infants so chloramphenicol should not be given to the infants because it produces the gray baby syndrome step 5 is the translocation now one of the important step in the protein synthesis is the translocation where the peptide chain which is present at the a site it should be transported to the p site so that the new amino acid is going to be attached at the a site so here one category of drugs are the macrolides macrolides again bind to the 50s subunit just like the chloramphenicol and they inhibit the translocation in this way by formation of a complex that peptide chain cannot be translocated to the a site to the p site and protein synthesis can be inhibited so the macrolides mainly include the erythromycin they are having the suffix thromycin similarly clarithromycin azithromycin and spiramycin all these are the macrolide antibiotics and ketolides ketolides like the telithromycin is also inhibiting the translocation and we have the other drugs like uh, spectinomycin and fusidic acid one of the lincosamide clindamycin all these are going to inhibit the translocation particularly the macrolides clindamycin and chloramphenicol all these are going to bind to the same site at the 50s subunit thereby they interact with uh, each other step 6 is the premature termination so during the protein synthesis every time a new amino acid is going to be attached at the a site but here we have one of the drug uh, puromycin this puromycin is just acting like a stop codon it is having some structural similarity to the trna which acts like the stop codon so whenever this puromycin is going to be attached to the a site this can uh, act like a stop codon and it inhibits the protein synthesis now when the puromycin is going to be attached at the a site the peptide chain which is present on the p site can be transported to this puromycin and form a peptide linkage but since the puromycin is acting like a stop codon this peptide chain is not attached with the a site and it immediately detaches from the a site so now it is going to release one of the peptide chain which is a premature peptide chain which is not having the properties of a protein so protein synthesis can be inhibited so puromycin is one of the drug which produces a premature termination of the peptide chain thereby inhibits the protein synthesis other mechanisms so on the bacterial protein synthesis we have the drugs like the quinupristin plus dalfopristin can act and and can inhibit the protein synthesis so these drugs are given in a ratio of 30 is to 70 and quinupristin dalfopristin again can bind to the 50s subunit thereby they can form a ternary complex this ternary complex will result in the inhibition of this 50s subunit thereby protein synthesis can be inhibited so quinupristin and dalfopristin are the streptogramins which are going to inhibit the protein synthesis in this way we have so many types of antibiotics which are going to acting on the bacterial protein synthesis we have the important category of drugs like the tetracyclines amino glycosides macrolides chloramphenicol linozolide streptogramins all these type of drugs are going to inhibit the bacterial protein synthesis and they are the good drug targets as the antibacterials so that's about the drug citing on the protein synthesis hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for
watching this video.